I have Martin with me uh, from Brickspaces, and uh, we're just uh, talking since the last year's intensively mm -hmm. about the new economics and uh, model of the new economics in retail. Yeah. How uh, old. KPIs are uh, getting together with the old investment mm -hmm. uh, models. So Martin is one of the pioneers with regards to what can retail space do mm -hmm. um, in the age of pop-up culture. Yeah. How, they, how can you monetize it? How can you measure engagement? Mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit about uh, what's the story behind? How did you come to that point? Yeah, thanks. Uh, so uh, we started out with the platform Brickspaces.te as a platform where we match tenant and landlord, where we can uh, use vacant space for a new retail concepts. So uh, instead of having vacant spaces that are just uh, empty and nothing is happening, we said, hey, something has to happen here. We need creative ideas that uh, get launched. And then in a certain period of time, for example, two to three months, it's, uh, uh, I mean, more effective for the brands to um, execute a uh, pop-up store instead of uh, doing the five to 10 years, which is usually in the retail um, industry. So now we're uh, experiencing a shift in uh, that area. Area, especially how you mentioned with the KPIs and the long-term uh, uh, leases that are getting uh, shorter and shorter. So with this platform, we really uh, created something new where brands can find their space where they can grow their ideas. However, we uh, realized that only to have the space itself, it's not enough because only really the large corporates have the agencies that execute then the retail uh, project or the pop-up project for them. So we started to think about, okay, how can we add services to our platform in order to make it easier for the brands to execute their project in the physical space. So then we created Blank as uh, one system um, that can be used for uh, pop-up solutions. And here we actually use it for a multi-brand context. So we're on let's say one um, retail space we put 20 to 30 brands in one space um, and curate them together and that's how we came up with not only having the space access for for vacant spaces but also the system of uh, helping the brands to execute it so uh, a lot of people are using the term uh, retail as a service that what we are doing but we think it's a little bit too less just to say retail as a service because we're adding more services to it so it's experience as a service it could be research as a service it could be content production as a service. So we're adding a, adding a lot of services to our portfolio to help the brands at the end of the day to reach their customer in a three-dimensional uh, experience. Show us a little bit about uh, retail analytics um, engagement. Yeah. How do we see it? Here is an example uh, of our dashboard that we are building right now. For, so for here, example, uh, Melita, one of our clients, um, the numbers are um, just example numbers, so not specifically for Melita, but just to give you an example. So here we see uh, week one, two, three, four, five, for example, a campaign that a brand has booked. And then here in the, in the gray graph, we can see how many people have viewed a product and then here in the blue um, area we see how many people have engaged with the product so if I press here on the engagement I can see how many of the engaged people are female and male how is the age group so here we can see it's a very um, balanced uh, target group and then we can see the dwell time three seconds eight seconds 30 seconds 50 seconds to see how deep the engagement at the end of the day is and then if you click here on the green part you can see the um, the sales details for example point of sale online channel and then which products have been sold and the history of uh, sold products and then further on, we want to create a, uh, a part where you can uh, get in contact with your uh, brand representative. We want to use a demographic, social media insights, store averages, but also in uh, store customer service where you can directly see the information that the customer feedback has given. So that is um, what we're working on uh, today. It's not fully uh, rolled out, so we're still in development, just as a small disclaimer. Um, but uh, this year we'll be rolling out this uh, dashboard where the brands can see their performance. And maybe in the future we can even go to a point where we can do pay-per-view, pay-per-engagement, and then pay-per-transaction, which then would be uh, sort of the affiliate fee that we can generate for us. So we really, with our uh, blank concept, see us as a um, type of marketplace approach where brands can book their physical three-dimensional space. We show the product and we enable the sale to the customer or directly to the customer. And um, at the end of the day, we help the brands to really take place in a physical uh, channel. This is um, the kind of cool thing because, um, tell me, brands understand what you're speaking um, yeah. about. Uh -huh. uh, how far 
how distant are investors from that language? Um, to be honest, they're, they're pretty close. So we ourselves ha have two investors um, that really speak the same language. Um, they're all about uh, data create or, or generating data, leveraging data and uh, to use it for ourselves because we can optimize our store operations on behalf of the data and we can understand the customer better on behalf of the data. So we actually have two different data points. We, On one side, we analyze location-based data, which comes from smartphone usage. So we're working together with um, third-party app um, providers or app, um, we say developers, uh, for example, uh, weather uh, apps or logistic apps, everything where GPS and Wi-Fi is being used. And from that um, app or the app usage, we can pull anonymous data about the usage in terms of um, what language they are speaking, where they're living at, maybe even what type of income level they have. On behalf of this uh, location-based uh, target group data, we can curate the product portfolio and brand portfolio even better because we know what type of interests the local target group has. And then to go beyond that, we have, um, speaking about the data that we just showed in here, we have cameras installed in the ceiling uh, that are uh, powered with the AI technology. Um, and on behalf of a database, we can calculate um, if the people are men or women, how old they are, and how long they are interacting with the product. So if you would go to this, to this um, uh, setup here and you would take this product, the cameras can then identify that you have been looking at this product for 30 seconds. And that's really what the brands want to know is how many people have seen my product, how many people have engaged with it, and how many people at the end of the day across this channel have bought the product. All right, it makes me happy to hear <laughs> that both both sides of the world are not that far or yeah. not that distant anymore. Yeah. This is good. And the investors are really <clears throat> taking a hard look at that because uh, they feel like this is something that is scalable, even though retail is um, a very operative uh, type of work uh, field. But with the data and the upsell packages that we do in terms of research and data insights or customer insights, that's really something mm -hmm. that can scale. And we're not only building this for ourselves, for yeah. our uh, blank spaces, but also for third parties. So retailers can also use the software that, that we are building. So scalability is key. Yeah, That is key. Thank you yeah. very much, Martin. <laughs> Thank You're you. welcome. <laughs> nice to have you here. <laughs>